Hello, this is Catherine, as I know I need to stop talking. Hello, loves, how are we all? Have you all got snow, you lucky bastards? We've got fuck all snow down here. I'm so disappointed. I felt livid. I So I live in the part of the country where we very rarely get snow, alas. And I had been keeping an eye on the weather forecast recently because I had heard that snow might be headed our way. And sure enough, the BBC weather app, which is terribly reliable and almost never lets me down, promised me that I was going to wake up this morning to a blanket of fresh snow. I was so excited. I was tragically excited to the point that I actually woke up at half past six on a Sunday. What a dick. And it was still dark and I looked out my window and there was no snow and I was lying there thinking this is going to be magical and wonderful and beautiful and the snow will come. And I lay there watching out of the darkened window as dawn started to break and it fucking pissed it down and there was not a single, single flake of snow whatsoever. Not even like a couple of consolation ones. It was just shitty, pissy, horrible, nasty rain. So yeah, I feel furious. And then of course, to add insult to injury, everybody on fucking Facebook, oh, look at us in the snow. We're making a snow angel. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm walking through muddy puddles and it looks like piss. Yeah. So if you've got snow, you're very lucky. We're all furious here, but, but yay, yay. Well done you. So here we are again, another week, another podcast. I've been a bit overwhelmed this week with the response to the podcast. Like it, it just started as a little fun hobby thing to do. And you've all been amazing and being so lovely as to, to listen to my ramblings. I mean, I have literally no clue why anybody would want to listen to me ramble on, but I'm so fucking grateful that, that you all do. Obviously, proper podcasters would be doing this in proper recording studios. I have turned off the household appliances. Oh, the household appliances. I I genuinely feel like I'm on some kind of hidden camera show. So the latest household appliance to go and really fuck me over is my dishwasher. I know, right? Hashtag first world problems and all that. But the dishwasher, there's a problem with the door latch. I only know this because I googled. Thank fuck for Google. What did we do before Google came along, eh? So I googled to find out why my dishwasher was starting and then and then stopping. And apparently this is a common, common problem. And I don't know if you've ever used the internet to try and fix household appliances. It's brilliant. There's a whole series of videos which will never ever happen upon until the point you need them, at least not unless you're into some kind of really weird fetish things, made by by men with solid sounding names like Dave and Jim. And Dave and Jim basically will talk you through the repair of any household item. And I, I shit you not, me and Mr. I know I need to stop talking. We repaired a fridge a few years ago. That was nice marital bonding. We repaired our tumble dryer. That was exciting. Put in a whole whole new button. When I say we, it's a little bit the royal we. I basically find the Dave or Jim video online and then I point Mr. I know I need to stop talking towards it. I mean, I do offer. I always offer to help. And, and he's he's been married to me a long time. And I think he's used to the fact that while my intentions are always excellent, the net result is always substantially more complicated than if I'd steered well clear. But I, I like to think of it as a as a joint a joint endeavour. So I, yeah, so the dishwasher was, was being a dick. So anyway, I was like, right, I'm on this. Found the spare part that I needed, ordered the spare part. So that's coming this week. But in the interim, obviously we could just wash up by hand. Well, I suggested this to the children who looked like I'd shat on their feet. Uh, so clearly suggesting that was not going to be an option. And and to be honest, home learning, more on which shortly, is that fucking torturous that I just think, let's let's not add another battle to the day, eh? So I thought, well, let me let me see if I can I can fix this. Let me see if I can solve this. And I had a quick look to see if Dave or Jim had done a video on my particular type of, of dishwasher. They hadn't. So Dave, Jim, if you're listening, it's a gap in the market. Just saying. And so basically what I did then was I kind of like stuck a, a stuck a sharp thing into it, into a slot in the dishwasher. Spoiler alert, don't do this at home. Very dangerous. I mean, I turned it off first. I'm not totally fucking stupid. And somehow I managed to make it work, which possibly was by sheer brute force rather than by any kind of skilled endeavour. And so I turned it on and, and it started working and, and I was amazed and I ran to the other room to tell Mr. I know I need to stop talking, who just hidden away, thinking just 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 do the washing up, for fuck's sake. And it, it started working. Anyway, I went up to bed last night, leaving it still working, and because of how I've kind of done it, it's a bit complicated. I probably won't be making a how-to repair video anytime soon based on what happened next. But basically it kind of it kind of runs and is not dependent on the door latch to be running. 
this becomes relevant shortly. So I, I went up to bed with Beth and Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking and Jamie were sat in the living room watching whatever they're watching. And I said, look, I'm worried about you guys going near the dishwasher. Don't go near it. I, I will come and turn it off when it, when it finishes. And they were like, okay, fine. Strange dishwasher obsessed woman. What are you banging on about? And so I went upstairs and then a little while later it hadn't done its beepy beepy thing. So I was like, okay, well, I want to go to sleep now. So I'm going to come downstairs and do it. I arrived downstairs to tell them that was what I was doing. Anyway, they looked at me like I was mad or stupid. And I opened the door and it appeared to have stopped doing its dishy washy thingy. So long story short, with the door open, I jiggled the little knob thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it turned on with the door open. I mean... I'm glad I didn't bother showering last night because I was absolutely fucking drenched as dishwasher water sprayed all over me. So that was that was last night. What a treat. I mean, people, you know, saying they need activities during lockdown. Maybe come and hang out with me. I, I can show you how to how to live the dream, showering in filthy dishwasher water. So this week's big excitement is going to be buying a new and fitting the new latch for the door. I know, right? Control yourselves. We are we are living on the edge around here. Living on the edge. So yeah, that's that's the dishwasher. But yeah, I've turned it off for the moment. I'm going to turn it back on after I finish recording this. Probably will err on the side of caution and put my swimming costume on first, just to just to be on the safe side. I think it might be for the best. It's very complicated. I don't know why my life is so very complicated, and yet, yet, yet it is. So we are week, what, 5,000 of home learning feels like it, doesn't it? It feels like it. I am so over home learning and I so now know without a shadow of a doubt why I didn't become a, a teacher because I, I just have no patience. Teachers, how do you do it? How do you do it? I, I, I go into home learning interactions with convincing myself. I'm like Mary fucking Poppins and like, oh, this is going to be so lovely. I'm going to sit with you and explain it. It's going to be easy. And we're going to really bond through this. And maybe I'll like move to a permanent home learning setup because I'm probably just so fucking good as a teacher. And I spend probably no more than 30 seconds sat with either of my children trying to explain something really basic. And I just lose the plot. I just, I'm like, why don't you understand? And they're like, well, I, I don't understand it. And I'm like, well, you should do. And they will say to me, but you haven't explained it. I'm like, well, I have. You haven't listened. You haven't been listening properly. Like, okay, but I don't understand. And I'm like, but it's this. It's this and this. And equals this. Why does it equal this? I don't fucking know. It equals this because the fucking worksheet says it fucking equals this. Just fucking write the answer down. But I don't understand it. Oh, dear God, give me strength. I saw a brilliant meme. I think this might have been in the last period of home learning. I saw a brilliant, brilliant meme that somebody had come up with, which basically said after week one of home learning, all parents have realised that teachers with immediate effect should have pay increased to a million pounds an hour. And to be honest, I don't think that's enough. I just, you must have the patience of saints. I just feel, feel livid. I, yeah, I definitely, I definitely don't have, don't have patience. And of course, there's different challenges, isn't there? So if you if you've got very young children, I can't imagine how how tough it must be. Obviously, I'm I'm very lucky. Mine are mine are that bit bit older, and I'd kind of convinced myself that that would mean that it would be easier. But the disadvantage is they fucking answer back loads more when they're older, and not just that, trying to get them out of bed. I mean, I do hope that whatever consultation. Gavin Williamson and his ilk are doing at the moment when it comes to the return of schools, which we're all going to get the heavy heights, heady heights of two weeks notice, which will be nice, I suppose, teachers, given that last time you got eight hours notice and you were asleep for most of those eight hours. But anyway, I digress. I, I do hope that when they're talking about whatever the reopening of the schools might look like, that for any child over the age of about 10, they've adjusted the morning start time to about three o'clock in the afternoon, because my God, getting my two up. And it's not too bad with Beth because she doesn't typically have live lessons, so she can kind of do her work as and when it suits, which actually works really well for, for us. I know some parents are like obsessed with the idea of live lessons. I just think anything that makes my life a little bit easier, i.e. doesn't mean I have to drag them in front of a computer by a certain time. I am all over that shit. But Jamie has a regular nine o'clock tutorial every morning, which is a really good thing for the school to do. And it's brilliant. And it means that they can check in on the kids every single morning getting Jamie out for bed for that tutorial. It's breaking me. It is breaking me. And I know what you're thinking listening to this. You're thinking, Catherine, why why, why are you getting him up out of bed? You know, he's got to learn. He's got to learn from these mistakes. 
no, he won't learn from these mistakes. He'll just sleep till fucking noon. He won't learn at all. So I have taken to, to going in to wake him up 15 minutes early and pretty much every day we get the same thing. I go in at quarter two, I'm really nice. I'm like, Jamie, you gotta get up for your call. It's gonna start soon. Time to get up. He like, he like wakes up, he's like, oh, what, oh, what? Oh. And I'm like, you gotta get up, time for your call. Yeah, I'm getting up, I'm getting up. I'm like, don't fall back to sleep. He's like, I won't, in, in wounded tones. Like, how could you suggest, mother, that I would fall back to sleep? Oh, only because you do it every fucking day. So I leave him at that point and I go back downstairs. Because obviously I'm trying to do, you know, my job as well at the same time. As is, Mr. I know I need to stop talking. And without fail, every day, two minutes to nine, I will then be sprinting up the stairs. And, and all, all semblance of, like, Mary Poppins is gone by this point. I am that meme of Mary Poppins versus Miss Hannigan. I am running upstairs going, Jamie! Jamie! Get upstairs! Get upstairs! Your call's started! And he's like, whoa, whoa. Um, Several times he's fallen back to sleep and has dreamt that he's been on the registration call, which I've explained to him in the nicest way isn't desperately helpful for his tutor because she can't see that um, he's actually there if he's asleep in bed as opposed to on the call where he should be. So yeah, he's um, he's a little bit challenging to to get up in the mornings. Like I said, I mean, really thank fuck I don't have to get Beth up for, for nine because trying to get, trying to wake Beth up at any point ever is a challenge to to say the least. So yeah, at least only one child to, to get up early. And then he, you know, again, he's, he's 13. So he's got, you know, we're lucky we've got a device for him to work on. But therein lies the problem, doesn't it? And I don't know if any other parents have found this because, of course, out of necessity, most of our children's learning is online. And thank goodness for technology. Isn't it wonderful that they can learn online in this pandemic? Aren't we lucky? Well, yes, we are. But unfortunately, there's no way of my children accessing their work on Teams or Google Classrooms or whatever it is without also having free and full unfettered access to the internet. And again, I, I can hear you all now thinking, well, Catherine, you made a rod for your own back here, haven't you? What you need to do is, is, is punish them, punish them severely so that they know it's unacceptable to access the internet. And, and you're probably right. I, maybe I, maybe I, should, I just can't be asked. I can't be asked. So I say every day, you know, you've got to focus, you've got to focus. They sit downstairs with me, so they're kind of in a, an area for focus. And I, and I think they do try their best. But Jamie, I mean, he'd be distracted if some coloured pieces of string started rocking around in the background. So the fact he's got YouTube at his fingers is is definitely something something of a challenge. And I, I retell the story from from last last year. So we learned from last year's home learning when he'd he'd been in his room all day, six hours working on a history project. And I was like, oh, Jamie you've worked so hard, you've worked so much, you know, and he said, oh, I'm not quite finished, and I said, don't worry, sweetheart, you've worked all day, let's have a look at what you've done. He'd written three sentences, three sentences in six hours, so we have learned from that, we have learned from that, he now sits downstairs with me so that I can shout at regular intervals, well, particularly if he's laughing, I'm like, I'm not sure the last time I thought that learning about Tudors and Stuarts was that funny, which suggests that you're probably distracted by something else. He's also really regretting the fact that he's got a mum who loves maths. So maths is like my first love. I love maths. I know this makes me sound really weird. And, and the more I describe it, I think the weirder that I sound. But I love it. It just makes sense. The numbers just add up and they just make sense. And I've always, always loved maths to the point that, and this is how tragic it is, when I was at drama school, a friend of mine, shout out Tim if you're listening in, Tim and I used to sit in rehearsals at drama school and he would bring in some past GCSE and maths A-level papers and we'd sit and do them and we had an absolute blast. I love it. I know. You've, you've completely reassessed your opinion of me. I can sense it now. You'll go, fucking hell. Honestly, so much fun. So poor Jamie, he's precisely at the stage in his schooling career when I probably most love maths. So things like trigonometry, algebra. I literally am rubbing my thighs with anticipation of the day he gets onto quadratic equations and he's backing away going, mate, her stop make her stop so to be honest he probably wishes he was back at school where he could get away with chatting with his mate in the back corner of the classroom because I'm like maths brilliant come on Jamie let's sit down and do it um unacceptable for him not to get the right answer we work through every wrong answer because they get the answers so they can mark it and then I'm like there's extension work and he's like we don't have to do the extension work and I'm like but it's locked out what else are you going to do with your time I know I know it's 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 but well, he's going to be phoning child line isn't he poor 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 child so yeah maths is maths is is definitely definitely my strength if there was one on home learning but some of the other subjects fucking hell school's changed a bit since I was at school at risk of stating the bleeding obvious ICT I was I was lost we had to do a bucket sort I say we Jamie had to do a bucket sort he was like what's a bucket sort I was like 
got no idea. He said, do you think it's like a bucket hat? I said, almost certainly not. We googled a bucket sort. We were none the wiser. So if anybody knows what a bucket sort is, feel free to to provide helpful advice. So yeah, that was that was ICT. And and Beth had to, I can't remember if I said this last week, Beth had to do Roman numerals. Roman numerals. Uh, obviously, it's on, on the curriculum, so these poor teachers are forced to do this. But really, what the fuck? Roman numerals. I mean, we've got digital watches these days. What iPhones? Why are we doing Roman numerals? And <laughs> Mr. I know I need to stop talking, who, who very patiently sat with Beth to do the Roman numerals, because my love of maths does not extend to Roman numerals, um, suggested that while he knew that, that maths had changed, <laughs> he didn't realise we'd gone back to the year 200 BC. Very good, Mr. I know I need to stop talking. Bravo. Very funny. Of course, we've had the joy of fronted adverbials. To be honest, if if my blog has given me nothing, it's that I could recognise a fronted adverbial a mile off. And so I was starting to feel quite smug. I'm like, yeah, I'm totally on top of the year five syllabus. Then they threw in causal conjunctives. And I'm not being funny, and I don't mean to sound like a dick, even though I almost certainly do, but I am a straight A student. I've got a postgrad degree. I've got a good job. I've got two published books causal conjunctive what what the everlasting fuck i just i just don't i don't understand i don't understand my life has ceased to have all 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 purpose i yeah home learning just i don't think it's me jamie said to me the other day he said actually he said i think i quite like learning at home he said maybe i could do it for longer i said no 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 you can't son no you'll be going back to school i mean the plus side then the massive plus side is that getting dressed has gone out out the window to be honest nobody nobody gets dressed I mean Mr I know I need to stop talking gets dressed but my children live in live in dressing gowns I can't remember the last time you know they reluctantly I drag them out every day on a walk for some nice organized fresh air and fun which they look about as livid about as you can probably imagine and but the rest of the time they they are they are just not dressed so it's become a standing joke amongst my work colleagues because I sit with my with my back to the rest of the room the children walk past when they're having their 3,000th snack of the hour or whatever it is. Honestly, it's like living with locusts. And it has become a standing joke that every time I sense movement from next to me and Jamie's getting up, I'm like, Jamie, put your penis away. It's like the constant refrain. He's like, what? It needs to be free. I'm like, not on the fucking Zoom call, it doesn't. So tell me it's not just my children who who, who don't get dressed. I mean, Beth at least wears pyjamas. I think Jamie's just, I think he's gone feral. I think that's probably, that's probably what it is. And we were chatting last week when there was various delightfully cheery news coming in through about new mutations and, and things like that. And, and Beth was like, oh, you know, I hope it's not going to delay me going back to football. And I said, well, you know, fingers, fingers crossed. Well, just, just see what happens. And Jamie was like, no, no, this is brilliant. I hope there's more mutations. I hope they're more deadly. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, mum, isn't this just brilliant? This lockdown, isn't it brilliant? And I thought, well, with the entire world fucked off with this pandemic and desperate for it to be over, at least there's one of us having a nice time, eh? He's probably going to need some kind of therapy when he has to get up and wear clothes and not have his penis swinging free. It's probably going to be some kind of therapy session when he when he returns to, to normality. But yeah, at least... At least one of us is 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 enjoying enjoying themselves, and I don't know about anybody else, but I have definitely definitely had moments of oh my god, the amount of time my children are spending on screens is like, it's a lot. It's really a lot. I, I've read a few studies and people are like oh don't worry, unless your child's spending more than this time on screen, you shouldn't worry. And I'm like, I mean my kids take a break from their screens when they go and have a wee, and when I force them out on a walk every day, that's pretty much it because they do everything through screens don't they maybe it's just my household maybe you're all much better but they learn through screens their downtime is typically through screens like watching stuff or playing games and things then certainly for beth i mean jamie's kind of really not bothered from a from a friend perspective but for beth you know that's how she keeps in touch with her friends is through screens as well so i i did force them this week i was like right so we're gonna have an hour's screen free time every day you're gonna do some reading and then you're gonna do a hobby and jamie said okay i'll play with some lego and Beth said, I haven't got any hobbies. Well, I like football. And I said, okay, well, we need to find you some other hobbies. So we went around the houses and eventually we landed on, because when I was a kid, I used to do lots of modelling with FIMO, like um, polymer clay, all brightly coloured. You could make stuff and you can put it in the oven. And Beth quite likes crafty stuff and it's relatively low mess. So I can, I can tolerate it. Unlike Play-Doh, I, I may have mentioned this on the blog before, when my children were little... We never had Play-Doh at home because I abhor it because it gets bits and hairs and ah in it. It's just horrific. 
and Jamie said to me once, he said, how come we, we, we never have played at home, but we have it at nursery and we have it at nanny and granddad's. And I said, that's because, Jamie, nursery and nanny and granddad, they have a Play-Doh license. We don't have a Play-Doh license. We can't have Play-Doh at home. Evil genius. It worked, though. We never had Play-Doh. But FIMO is, is, is much more manageable and also kids are a lot older, so less likely to, like, drop snot in it or whatever hell small children do with, with Play-Doh-type substances. So we bought some FIMO. It duly arrived. It's very exciting. It took me right back to my childhood, blatantly living that out through through Beth, and, and we, made some, we made some marbling. We made some beads. And then the next day I was, I think I had a work meeting, so I said to the children, well, go and, go and make something. Go and make something with the FIMO. And follow some tutorials online if you want to. And you can probably predict where this is going. I came back. Beth had made a really cute little cat. I was like, it's brilliant, Beth. We'll put it in the oven. That's amazing. Jamie had made a cock. That's my boy. He'd made a penis. So, yeah, we are trying to get breaks from screens. But it's, it's really hard, isn't it? It's it's really hard. And it's, you know, kids are, are very resilient. And they've been incredibly resilient. Probably more so than, than as adults. We'll leave Jamie aside because he's weird and would like to be in lockdown forever. But for the rest of us it's tough right it's it's hard work and oh so so cute so coming up to bed the other night and beth had got my my phone and she'd facetimed her best friend who they've the, her best friend her wife you want to know about beth's, beth's wedding so um they've known each other since they're about two and they've pretty much spent every weekday together through school or nursery ever since and so this is the longest period of time they've been apart in in a long time and um they were they were just sat there just before going to bed facetiming one another and Beth's like, I just called, I just called to say goodnight because because I miss you so much. I love you. And her friend's like, I love you too. And I was like, oh, my heart, I can't cope with this. This is too, too moving. But yeah, they are, they are very resilient, but it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of screen time. Actually, Beth had an amazing screen time experience this week because as you all know, she's an avid footballer. She is missing football so much. It's, it's like she's fine in herself. But it's just like there's a little spark has gone out. And, you know, we know she'll get back to it when it's safe and when it's ready. But it is hard as a parent, I think, to see that. But her club, amazingly, had organised this week for her team, her girls team, to have a Zoom call with one of the players from the first team. And I said to Beth, oh my goodness, this is this is amazing. This is an amazing opportunity for you to you know meet a professional footballer and find out what they did to get there and what their career journey was like. And they had to think of some questions. And so I we talked through with Beth to make sure she had a good list of questions and she knew what she wanted to ask. And so it was like, great. Anyway, that evening, she didn't want us in the room. And I said to Mr. I know I need to stop talking. Well, someone needs to be in the room with her. So you stay in the room. I, ha- I had to do a late work meeting anyway. So so he stayed in the room with her and she had a lovely time. And he said, oh, you know, she had a brilliant time. She came out beaming. I said, did you ask some good questions? She said, yeah, yeah. I said, wow, what, what did you ask? Was it really helpful? She said, yeah. I said, what did you ask? She said, well, we asked a lot. I said, okay, well, what, what was the best question that you asked her, that your team asked her? She thought for a while, she said, well, and, I, and I'm thinking, you know, she's going to have asked something about, you know, how should she, how should she train in lockdown or what's the career route to become a professional or stuff like that. She said, yeah, there was one really good question. And I said, cool, what was it? She said, we asked, what do you prefer, KFC or McDonald's? So there we go, there we go. Beth's football career is all going to now hinge on what do you prefer, KFC or McDonald's? mcdonald's for the reference fact fans so yeah that was her that was her her call this week but honestly volunteers and and people like that are are so amazing i think it makes such a difference for the kids but yeah unlike jamie i am i am very ready for 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 just just a return back to some of the things that that we all love doing and all took for granted until suddenly we couldn't do them anymore and it's definitely definitely made me appreciate um yeah zoom's great for millions of different things but fucking hell it's no substitute for a hug is it it is really no substitute for a hug but spring's coming spring's coming we've been out doing a load of walking dragged the children out this afternoon we went past a caravan fire oh my god the excitement it was literally like 12 episodes of the latest netflix series rolled into one i had to drag them away literally drag them away so Everybody was all right. I just hastened to add there was nobody trapped in the caravan. It wasn't quite that lurid or horrific. But yeah, caravan fan, highlight of the day. But you can really see out and about spring's coming. The daffodils are there. The snowdrops are popping up. Obviously, lots of you lucky bastards have got snow. So you probably feel less like spring is on the way. But I can assure you spring is is definitely, definitely coming. Nearly the end of January. Nearly the end of dry January. I mean, who does dry January in a pandemic? What a dick. I do feel dead smug and virtuous, though, I have to say. I also feel much 
much better than I did this time last year. And I, I had a Zoom call with some friends last night and we were remembering we'd got together at a similar time of year, time of year last year to celebrate my friend's birthday. And we were remembering that evening because, so last year I was doing Dry January, I was feeling smug and virtuous as I am now. And I thought, well, you know, I've, I've not fucked up my own January enough, really. I, sh- I should do something to, re- to really ensure it's painful. So I'm a big fan of online workouts. And there's a particular lady that lots of you, I'm sure, would have heard of called Blogger Lattes. If you haven't and you like hardcore hit workouts, she's brilliant. She's very hardcore, but she's fantastic. And pretty much all of her workouts are free as well. And she has something called the Thousand Squat Challenge, which if you're more sensible than me, you're probably hearing that title alone and thinking, fuck that shit. Yes, yes, you are much wiser. You are much wiser. Well, I'd done it once years ago when I was much younger and much fitter. And so last January, carrying a bit of excess Christmas timber, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll do the thousand squat challenge. I'll give it a go. wonder if I can still do it. And I'm pretty fit. You know, I walk or exercise most days. So I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably fit. So I was starting from a good base level of fitness. Anyway, set down to do it. Takes about 45 minutes. And I made it through. Dripping with sweat. Feeling like I was going to puke through my own eyeballs. But I made it through. And I was like, get me. Obviously went and posted about my achievements on social media. Because seriously, why do any of us work out if not to post about that shit on social media? So finished the workout, cooled down like you're supposed to do, went upstairs, had a bath. Woke up the next morning and felt a little bit stiff. Not surprising, just done a thousand squats. Okay, fair enough. And I thought, well, you know, this is, this is great. I feel really, I must have thighs of steel. This is fantastic. Woke up the morning after and I couldn't fucking move. And it's not an exaggeration to say, I tried to swing my legs around to get out of bed and I could barely manage it. I stood up like some octogenarian who'd I I don't even know had sunk 12 bottles of whiskey I genuinely could not walk I kind of staggered to the bathroom clinging onto the wall slightly like the last time I'd done that I think was when I was about 12 and I had an inner ear infection that was probably what I looked like like some maniac with an inner, inner ear infection managed to get in the bath thought fuck I hope I can get back out of the bath and I had basically managed and I looked it up at the time on the internet which is always really reassuring when you google shit right and it goes yeah you're going to die. And true to form, Dr. Google did indeed tell me I was going to die. I felt like I was fucking going to die. So to be honest, it wouldn't have surprised me. And I then obviously had to get up, take the children to school and go to work. The pain. Oh, the pain. Because of course, and you know what it's like when you like slightly work out too much. Every time you like ease yourself into a new position, your muscles are like, whoa, what are you doing? Well, imagine that to the power of about 30 billion. Oh, what good grief. I, was, I had tears in my eyes getting up. And the best bit of all, walking the entire time. The only way I could manage to walk the whole time, looking like I'd shat myself. So yeah, my advice is if you're going to do dry January, don't exacerbate it by also doing the thousand squat challenge. But you won't do that because you're not nearly such a dick as I clearly, clearly am. So yeah, if nothing else, like I say, doing dry January, but at least I don't look like I've shat myself every cloud. So with that, I'm going to go and try and mend the dishwasher. I've got complete visions of me and in my head I'm always a lot more capable at DIY than I actually am. So I've got complete visions of this going really well, but probably what's going to happen is it's going to end up giving me a a fully clothed shower instead with little bits of food spraying all over me so it's a treat of a Sunday night I'm telling you it is an absolute treat look after yourselves I know things still feel tough but you know it is it is dark days at the moment but I'm an eternal optimist